Sorry, not your left, your right hand side. You're going to see an Okapi up against the wall with the stripes on its legs. Now those stripes may make you think they're related to the zebra, but there's actually no relation. They're related to the giraffe. And these guys were right very close to you on your right hand oh, side. Those deer like little creatures. They're not deer. Those are actually greater kudu. They're the second tallest antelopes in Africa. Oh, there's another one on your left-hand side. She's trying to cross the road. And these reddish-brown creatures that you see making their way through everything up ahead, these are bongos. They're known as ghosts in the forest because usually they're very shy, and instead they're actually just going to cross the road. <laughs> Please sit down, please sit down, please sit down, thank you. Now on your left hand side, you might also get a glimpse of a black rhinoceros. Although I don't know if I see one right now. Oh, there are more bongos though, coming up on your left, right, very close to your left. Now something really cool about Harambe Reserves is we're actually partnered with the Disney Conservation Fund to help save a lot of the animals you see here today, or don't see here today. I'm looking for that black, right there, back left, back left, black rhinoceros. Uh, to help guys like him, because unfortunately there are less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the world. World, they're getting poached for those horns of theirs. Boys were helping. We're actually working with a security team that helps save and defend at least 70 different kinds of species of animal, including the black rhinoceros. And as we leave Little Tree Forest, we're going to enter into the Saki River. Now, in the Saki River, hopefully, we'll get to see some Nile hippopotamuses, but you never know what's just around the riverbend, so keep your eyes peeled. Oh, there's definitely a hippo. He's up against the wall. Now a group of hippos is called a bloat, although that is just one. Those guys are excellent swimmers, but if they can, they will just walk along the bottom. They can hold their breath for about six minutes at a time. And if you notice that a majority of their facial features is on top of their head, that's so they can just float along all day when they need to go up for Just pop their little heads up. If you see that island on your left-hand side that's full of birds, those are pink-backed pelicans. They get their name from the gorgeous pink-backs they get during mating season, which is obviously not right now. They're more like gray-backed pelicans. Oh, ducklings. Sorry. <laughs> There's some little baby ducklings there. Now those hippos are also nocturnal, which means they're more active during the nighttime. That's usually when they'll walk up on the shore and eat tons of grass. Now sometimes around here you'll get to see some Nile crocodiles, although I don't know if I see any right now. They're quite large, they're about 20 feet long. Although 
do you see a lot of fish? That's okay, there's a lot more to see coming up. We're going to be entering into the Serengeti grasslands or the savanna. So hopefully we'll get to see some giraffes and some elephants. But the first thing you guys are going to see isn't going to be an animal. It's actually going to be a plant, which doesn't sound very interesting, but it's kind of an interesting plant. On your right hand side, right there, you're going to see that weird looking tree. That is a baobab tree. It's also known as an upside down tree because its branches kind of look like roots. Nine months out of the year, you won't see it with any leaves because that is how it conserves water. Now these are those Serengeti grasslands I was telling you about. They're used as a super highway to a lot of animals here because a lot of animals here migrate. Now if you see those reddish brown mounds off in the distance, those are all termite mounds. They kind of look like anthills, but they're definitely termite mounds. They're as solid as concrete, so a lot of animals like to use them as back scratchers. But when they do get worn down, like that one on the right hand side, then smaller antelopes like to use them to either look out for predators or to hide behind. Now if you look over to your left hand side past these termite mounds, you'll get to see something really cool. You'll get to see some baby animals. Okay, you can see those sable antelopes, and then amongst all of them, you're going to see some baby sable antelopes. They're all in yeah, the ones without the horns. I like to call them babies because we're baby sables. Sable antelopes are actually really cool because they're the emblem of Harambe Reserve, so those are those horned animals you see everywhere. Those horns can be about four to five feet long. Mounds. You can probably see from here on your left hand side or right hand side, I guess. It'll be on your left now, but on your right coming around. Those horned creatures off in the distance, those huge, huge, huge horns, those are Ancoli cattle. Those horns can be about six feet long from tip to tip, which is why you can see it from this far away. They're also known as Egyptian longhorns for obvious reasons, and Watusi cattle because of the Watusi tribe that domesticated them. They're the only domesticated animal on the reserve, but they're not used for milk or meat. They're actually used to show off wealth. And if you see that little orange guy all the way out there, kind of by himself, beyond the Ancoli cattle, that little guy is a springbok, and he gets his name because he can spring about 10 to 12 feet in the air. Now those, that one Ancoli is going to be very close to the road. distance, those are all wildebeests. Those are white-bearded wildebeests. They get their name from the Afrikaans word for a wild beast. They're also known by another name, which is Nu, spelled G-N-U, because of the sound they make. It's kind of like Moo, but not quite. And if you see this antelope on your right-hand side, right behind that tree, that guy is a Patterson's eland. He's the tallest antelope in Africa. <laughs> and he's a sandy color, so he can blend in with that tall grass. <laughs> now 
Now, if you look off to your left hand side in the trees, you're going to see some giraffes. There's about two. Please sit down. Please sit down. Thank you. Now, those guys are the tallest land mammals. They can be about 20 feet tall. But they have the same amount of vertebrae in their neck as you and I, which is seven. A group of them is called a tower, so I guess that's technically a tower of giraffes. And those are Maasai giraffes. They have a brown color and a lacy pattern to them. They also have huge hearts. Not only are they very sweet, but their hearts literally weigh about 25 pounds. Sometimes on your left you'll be able to see some monkeys, although I don't know. Oh, there's one against the back wall. He's kind of walking around. It's okay, we're actually going to head into elephant country, so we'll probably see some more. And since that road is closed, I'm just going to take a shortcut. Now the only thing about this shortcut is it's on a very old bridge. It's not been renovated in a while, so I'm just going to go nice and easy over this one. So just sit tight. the watering hole. zebras first and an ostrich all right so everything oh you're gonna see there is an ostrich there's two ostriches all right well so those are some zebras and this ostrich is going to cross the road let's get to the other side all right so those are ostriches they're the largest birds but they cannot fly they can run very fast and those zebras are black with white stripes, you can tell because of their nose. Those stripes are kind of like our fingerprints, you know, to our life, that's how they identify themselves. 
And if you see those little brown guys coming around here, right there with the white faces, those guys are my personal favorite. Those are Bonta Box. When the sun hits their coat just right, it turns a little bit purple. They're also related to wildebeest. Maybe you might be able to see on the very far up left. Yeah, you're going to see some cheetahs. Oh, there's one laying down. I'm going to come around here. Look to your left. Look to your left. You see him? You see him? See him now? There you go. <laughs> They're the fastest land mammals. They can reach speeds up around 60 to 70 miles an hour. But they're sprinters, so they can only maintain that speed for a short amount of time. There's a couple more coming up on your left as well. These guys also cannot roar or meow. They actually make a chirping sound. They kind of sound like birds. They're also the only big cat known to purr. Now this right here is a kopi. And kopis are pretty popular with lions. Lions like to lounge around on them because they're like your average house cat. They'll sleep about 18 to 20 hours a day. But these guys do roar and you'll know when they do because you can hear from about five to six miles away. It's not very subtle. Oh, there's a couple out. They're gonna be on your left. Do you see them? Alright, so just so just bear with me real quick as we uh Wait for this guy to go. Let's get your cameras up and ready to the left. But Pumbaa does not mean warthog. Although you will see some warthogs on your left. They're under that tree right there. They kind of look like furry rocks. <laughs> They're burrowing creatures. They'll enter in those burrows backwards so that their tusks show out. Pumbaa actually means silly or foolish. On your right hand side in the distance you're gonna see those white rhinos. Yeah. I believe coming around here, if you want to look to your left, there's a little clearing. You might be able to see those warthogs a little bit better. They're going to be yeah, in front of that tree. We're slowly moving along. Oh, oh, I think we're stuck. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so very, very close to uh, the truck. Now I understand why we were slowing down. On your right-hand side, you're going to see an attic. Oh, 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 oh man. <sighs> okay, yeah, right, literally right there. Uh, you're going to see those attics. There's also some coming up on your left. Now, those guys, these guys are desert dwellers. They can go their entire lives without drinking any water. Those horns on their head what? grow to be about three feet long. Yeah, they get it all from their diet. They also like to be very close to the road, sometimes even in the road. There's another one coming up on your left, very close to the road. And on your right-hand side, if you see those birds that are all sitting down, those guys are yellow-billed storks. They're about three and a half feet tall, but they have a wingspan of five feet. And they're carnivores. So they like to eat small fish, lizards, snakes, and frogs. Unfortunately, we are reaching the end of our two-week safari, but it felt like a mere 20 minutes because time flies out here. And if you would like to see some more animals at a closer view and not from a moving vehicle, I'm going to suggest the Pangani Forest Trail because there you might get to see some lowland gorillas, and I believe they just had babies about six or seven months ago, so they should be out as well. Three baby animals in one day. But if you like tigers, I would hop on over to Asia because we don't actually have tigers over here in Africa. They're over there on the Maharaja jungle trail and if you are a wilderness explorer trying to earn your badge for riding the safari all you gotta know is the name of the truck and the name of the truck is Simba One S-I-M-B-A One now I'm gonna drop you guys off at the nearest Warren's Coast which is just right up ahead